right guys, so you've seen me tackle the rear uh, shocks in which I put on the two uh, Bilstein 4600s on my 95 GMC Suburban here. Now I'm going to be tackling the front two shocks. And uh, just to show you what they look like, I have my boxes here. And boom, there you go. And you can see that uh, they come with all bushings pre-installed and everything. Um, this bushing has a metal insert and all that. Everything is completely ready to go um, straight out of the box. And I got these shocks on Amazon. I'll put a link to that down in the description below of this video. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you is that when you look under the wheel well, uh, where you'd expect to find the shock uh, mount, you're gonna have this uh, baffling. Now these trucks are fairly old, so some of yours uh, might not have this. Um, some of yours might, mine does. And so I don't wanna remove that because you'll never get it back on the same way it came off. So I'm looking for ways that I can get to it, which it's very easy. I have a half inch uh, socket here, or a ratchet I should say, um, with a three inch extension and an 18 millimeter uh, socket on there. And then I just have a, a crescent wrench, a really small one, just adjusted to the right size. And it's actually going to be um, using the frame as the frame of the truck as a stop to hold it. So all I'll have to do is crank on this, hopefully, and I'll be able to just loosen that bolt. So there's only two bolts involved in this whole process of getting a shock on and off. I'm hoping I don't have to remove the tire um, in order to get the shock in and out, but uh, we'll see once we go down below. Okay. Don't strip on me, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna have to use two hands on this. There's the bolt. It's out, it's in good condition. Uh, had to use a little bit of force and adjust my position, but just a couple good uh, pushes on that uh, half inch uh, ratchet got her loose. Okay, so the bottom uh, bolt is a little tricky, but doable. Hopefully you can see where I have the uh, wrench, the adjustable wrench on the bolt there. Um, and I'm hoping that it's going to just kind of use, uh, you know, kind of all the metal over there um, as the stopper when I'm cranking on the other side. So yeah, that, that's just an adjustable wrench, easiest way I, I can think to do it. This right there is the bolt that I need to crank on. And uh, I didn't think that the socket was going to be deep enough. But apparent, well, I don't know, maybe it's not, but it, it, it seems deep enough. I think that it is. I think it's, everything's gonna work out fine. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope it is. Pretty straightforward. Just gotta stick the wrench in the end of that and just crank on it. I got it. Uh, here it is. Um, yeah, watch this. Very easy to depress. And of course, a 20 year old shock, you can't expect anything less, uh, does not return to its original position. This is a, an original Delco Products shock. You probably can't read that on there, but it's stamped in the bottom. This should be a major upgrade with these new Bilsteins. First thing I did was I, you can probably see the shock down there. I slid the shock up into position, uh, up into the upper shock mount. I was able to use this little tool to kind of uh, put it in there and adjust the hole for the bolt to go, th go through, if that makes any sense. I was able to reach real far deep in there and grab the body of the shock and adjust it while I used my other hand to slide the bolt through. That process took like maybe 10 minutes, but it wasn't hard. It was just figuring out where the hole was in the upper shock mount to get everything to line up. Slide the bolt right through, start the, the uh, nut on there just so the bolt doesn't slide back out. Now I'm gonna go back down below and do whatever I can to figure out how to get compress the shock to get the bottom of the shock mount into the bottom of the shock into the bottom shock mount. So you can see here what I'm dealing with. I basically have to get this there and it doesn't seem like that big of a deal but when you think about how hard it is to compress these shocks and I have no leverage 
to be able to do it. So I'm going to try to see if maybe something like this pry bar will help me. Um, but uh, yeah, that's going to be the biggest challenge, I think, in this whole process is sliding the new shock into position. All right, guys, so the job is done. I have replaced both back shocks with Bilstein 4600s both front shocks with Bilstein 4600s. You've seen the shocks that came off this truck. I compressed them and they were literally just trash. All right guys, so I've only driven this thing in a like neighborhood, what do you call that, rural or something like that, in a neighborhood area. But uh, I can tell you just from hitting some bumps and just really small kind of like bumpy road and you know dips in the road and stuff like that, it really seems, I mean it's, world's better night and day better here comes a pretty big dip right here let me let me just take it at 25 miles an hour wow <laughs> before the whole front end would have shaken while the tires bounced off the road and now it just handles it like a champ uh man i i am really impressed right now just if that just off that one bump i i could tell that it's crazy crazy better all right guys, so here I am on the freeway. And I can tell you, I'm gonna get off the freeway now actually, but I can tell you with a, without a shadow of a doubt that uh, these shocks have drastically improved the ride quality of this Suburban. Yeah, I'm very happy and I, I would totally recommend these shocks. I mean, they, they're just very nice shocks. Uh, until next time, Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up this video, share it with all your friends, and I'll see you in the next uh, repair or upgrade that I do to this uh, 95 GMC Suburban. Peace out, guys.